Are you about to start work on a data science project? Not so fast, because there's a fairly good chance that that project you're working on is going to fail. Now why is that? Keep watching and we'll discuss why that is. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. So a lot of different companies have weighed in on this issue, and they all seem to be coming to the same pessimistic conclusion. And if that wasn't bad enough, their outlooks seem to be getting worse every single year. Let's read this from bottom to top. So in May 2017, Cisco reported that IoT initiatives have a 74% failure rate. Then around the same time as that, Gartner predicted that 60% of big data projects would fail to move past preliminary stages, only to correct that a little bit later and say, actually the real number is closer to 85% of big data projects were gonna fail. A year later, they came out and they said 80% of analytics insights will not deliver business outcomes through 2022, and that 80% of AI projects would remain alchemy run by wizards, quote unquote, through 2020. Then you have New Vantage claiming that 77% of businesses report that big data and AI initiatives never got business adoption, only they got then massively one-upped by VentureBeat AI, who report that 87% of data science projects never actually make it into production. So I'm gonna detail why exactly this seems to be the case, but I also wanna point out that I've been there. A few years ago, I was involved in a project to predict the onset of a particular medical condition, and everything was going great. It was a successful project, or at least it seemed to be, until basically it just became relegated to some PowerPoint slides. Then there was another large product I worked on in which I was one of the lead data scientists, and there was a lot of really cool, novel, statistical, and simulation models in it, but it never actually made it into production. So believe me when I say, I can relate to all of this. So I'm gonna go through five often cited reasons for why data science projects seem to fail so often, and when possible, I'm gonna bring up how these things actually manifested in my own projects. Before I do that, just a few things to ask of you guys. Number one, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. Then take just one second of your time to smash the like button because that really does help my content reach a larger audience. Also in the description of this video, I will have a link to my Patreon account. So if you guys would be willing to support me in that way, it would be enormously appreciated. So let's start with what can potentially be the biggest issue of them all, and that's not solving the right problem. And there's a saying that for some people, they will build models in search of a problem. And that's particularly true of people who are just fresh getting out of school and they're looking for opportunities to grow their technical capabilities. Well, the problem is, true value is never actually going to be created that way. You may think that something you created is amazing, but unless it's solving a very concrete problem for somebody else, at the end of the day, nobody is really going to care. Now that's a very specific and extreme example of this broader issue, but you'd be surprised how often this sort of thing can occur. Every single data science problem begins with one critical and fundamental question, and that is, what is the purpose of this analysis, or project, or whatever you want to call it? It's from this point that literally everything you do is downstream. You need to know exactly what problem you're trying to solve before you can begin thinking about what solution you can build, what data you need, what assumptions need to be made, the list goes on and on. Suppose you have a client that comes to you and they say they need a staffing or a scheduling algorithm. Well, before you can even begin to think about how you can make their life easier, you need to understand what it is they're doing right now and why that isn't working. And it takes domain expertise and communication skills to get to that point. You may eventually find out that they don't actually need a scheduling or staffing algorithm or anything like that, but the true solution is something that's much simpler. Then if you're really good, you can make them think that that sort of thing was their idea all along. But that's a consulting Jedi mind trick for another day. Next issue is related to the first one, but it's a little bit more specific. And it's when you lack support from key stakeholders. 
This is another one that illustrates the importance of communication in data science. Because at the end of the day, you are creating solutions for other human beings. And those solutions should be things other people understand and that they can actually use. Well, suppose your most important stakeholders don't trust or don't understand whatever it is that you're giving them or telling them to use. Well, you don't stand a chance then. Now, I have a couple personal examples for this one, which will hopefully help to illustrate it a bit. In one simpler example, I was on this project where we were presenting this report to a department head, and one of the findings from that report was that his staff were only doing value-add activities 40% of the time. Well, let's just say that didn't exactly make him look good, and he didn't exactly receive it very well. In the project I described where we were building a model to predict the onset of a medical condition, there was one of the medical directors who was extremely skeptical about the whole endeavor. Now he was thinking, okay, so I have 20 plus years of medical experience, how is some model going to come around and tell me what to do and know better than I do? Now he was thinking that, and you got to think from his perspective, he's totally within his rights and reason to think that. Now, if this issue happens to you, you may or may not be working on the right problem. But either way, this is something that you need to get resolved if you want to have any chance of your solution getting adopted. Third item on this list is when you build something that fails to integrate with client systems and technology or processes. Let me start this one off by saying that change is disruptive and a lot of people really don't like it. And that's part of why the second item about stakeholder support is so important. But let's go back to my example about building a model to predict the onset of some medical condition. And let's just say hypothetically that model was built and it comes back with a specific prediction for somebody that yes, that patient is about to develop rapid clinical deterioration. Now, if you think about it, that model would have to be somewhere where it can interface with data in real time, and then that result would have to be communicated to the right people. Those people then have to use that information to take some kind of medical action with it. You see now that there's a lot of moving parts to something like this. You have a systems integration component, and you have channels of communication for the organization through which information needs to move. Researcher David Becker broke down the leading causes in big data project failures in a 2017 research paper. Now he does this in a very granular fashion, but some of these things include data integration, technology complexity, management and cultural resistance, technology architecture and infrastructure, technology change, all of that. So you see this is really something that requires a multidisciplinary approach and upfront planning. Now for number four, let me start this one off by saying that anybody who's worked in data science for a while will tell you poor data quality is the rule rather than the exception. Now that's fine, that's no problem, until you fail to plan for it. I just did a video on exactly how bad data quality can affect any kind of modeling effort you do. If you haven't seen that video yet, highly recommend it. I'll have a card up above as well as a link in the description. But in short, you're going to run into problems like low sample size, bad amount of variation, useless and uninformative variables, all these sorts of things which are going to impair your results unless you address these issues. So there should be no question that bad data, or at least some kind of data-related problems in general, are just baked into the equation. You need to know that that's going to happen and just plan and adjust for it accordingly. Oftentimes, you're going to have these data issues, you need to resolve them, and that can take a lot longer than you would first expect it to. And also, honestly, most of the time, you're probably not going to be able to get more data. So you have to work with what you're given and really practically understand how problems like low sample size, assumptions, data problems, all that good stuff truly impacts what you deliver. What you deliver is never going to be perfect. But if you understand what problems you have, you plan for them, and you deal with them accordingly, you should be able to come up with a solution that's good and gets the job done. Then the last item to talk about here is having the wrong expertise on board. So first of all, you need to have a multidisciplinary approach to any data science project. 
Now, unless the domain expertise of the data scientists is stellar, somebody's gotta be around who can provide subject matter expertise. Then you need some project management up top, and you need the right amount of data science expertise. Let's look at a couple extremes. If you don't have any data scientists on deck who are asking the right questions, you're going to get steamrolled. Because things like bias, Simpson's paradox, correlation versus causation, the regression effect, all these things manifest in data analyses. And if you're not asking the right questions, you have opportunity on top of opportunity to make mistakes. But the opposite extreme is possible too. So in one project I was working on in the past, we had about eight people who were involved in the project on and off, and five of those people were machine learning and modeling experts. And not only did nobody have any work to do for about the whole first half of the project, but the whole thing was just a disorganized, complete mess. You can't be working in silos, you need to be working in a cross-functional capacity, but you also can't get the idea that you can just throw a whole bunch of really smart people at a problem and then hope that something really good is going to turn out on the other end, because it won't. So hopefully now the fact that so many data science projects fail makes sense to you. And if you're somebody who's just now coming out of college, you now know exactly what you're walking into. Lots of people get out of college and they think that they know everything that there is to know. Well, if that was true, then the failure rate in real projects wouldn't be so high now, would it? Now, I don't want this to all sound too discouraging. Ideally, maybe even you're working on a data science project right now and you watch this whole video and you had an aha moment that will help you save your project from an untimely failure. At the end of the day, you have to continually practice data science in the real world and do it in an unsiloed fashion. Then and only then can you utilize data to achieve great things in the world. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please consider sharing it. Also, once again, smash the like button and leave me a comment down below and let me know if you've been involved in a project that's failed. Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.